Hello everyone, I'm Usman Anwar, uh, Product Manager on AWS IoT team. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about how you can use a new capability called SiteWise Edge uh, to enable applications that can help you unlock operational insights on the factory floor. Uh, we have a packed ag agenda uh, uh, covering use cases, uh, the feature overview, as well as some customer wins and demos from uh, us and from partners. So we will be first, uh, we'll start off with uh, uh, spending some time discussing the insights that customers need to streamline the industrial operations on a daily basis. Uh, we'll then look at some of the examples of applications that can help them. Uh, we will then uh, look at how end users such as production technicians and plant managers can use site-wise edge capabilities to get instant insights. Uh, and also how industrial software vendors can use site-wise edge as a data processing component within their own solution. Uh, and that's a solution we're gonna uh, demo. Uh, we will then uh, share some of uh, uh, some examples from uh, of customers, specifically Coca-Cola iCheck that are using SiteWise Edge to drive efficiencies in their beverage bottling operation. Uh, and then finally, we will uh, leave you with, with a resource that can help you get started with, with SiteWise Edge. What we've learned working uh, with industrial customers over the years is that factory operations can be fast paced, diverse and sprawling. Uh, optimizing such operations is uh, a shared responsibility involving multiple personas, uh, teams uh, and, and organizations within a company. Uh, often they, these, uh, uh, the, the optimization of operations basically boils down to uh, knowing how what the existing state of the operation is and what the desired state of the operation uh, uh, is, and then basically working out, uh, working on reducing the difference or, or variation uh, between the desired state and, and the actual state. Uh, and we think that one should not really need to be an expert to participate in this process, and they shouldn't need to talk to experts uh, uh, in order to get the information they want. And what we're learning from most customers is that there are many uh, people on the factory floor that are able to participate in uh, optimizing processes, detecting and reducing waste if they have the right tools uh, uh, available to them, tools that can help them get the data and the insights uh, they need to understand uh, the state of the operations. Specifically, they want to, uh, what, what these tools can help customers, these personas do is ask questions. Uh, these questions can concern the product itself, such as you know how much product was uh, was created uh, in a particular shift. What was the quality of the product? Uh, the question can concern uh, the process. You know how does the throughput vary uh, between shift to shift uh, across my processes? Is uh, you know is the process that is the throughput higher in in one part of the plant versus another? Is it higher in in the morning versus in the evening shift? Uh, is, it, uh, is, is it how does it compare to uh, to processes uh, that are uh, that are uh, uh, at, at other locations or, or factories uh, within within the company? And then these questions can, the the questions can be about the equipment itself. Like for example, like hey, is my is my motor running uh, well? Is it is it running without heating? Is it is it running? Is it showing any signs that indicate that it might fail soon? Uh, and then uh, uh, the, uh, we are seeing a new use case, uh, especially driven by COVID, where manufacturers are paying more attention to uh, safety on the factory floor. So the questions could be, hey, like, is, are, are all of my colleagues safe? Are all of my technicians, uh, technicians safe? And the pandemic uh, drove uh, many manufacturers, including Amazon, to, to ask these questions and then bring up capabilities to ensure that uh, workers, frontline workers can continue to operate uh, in their critical roles on the factory floor uh, while uh, being, being, being safe. Uh, we think that making it easy to answer these questions at scale will not only unlock the next stage of efficiency gains for our customers, but they could fundamentally lead to better products and, and basically create a more, more adaptive uh, economy. So it's exciting to see a whole new generation of solutions 
and uh, applications to emerge to help industrial operators get actionable insights uh, about their operations on the factory floor. Uh, a lot of these solutions use the best in class machine learning, computer vision and analytics technologies uh, that can help detect issues that can save uh, customers millions of dollars uh, by preventing you know, unplanned downtime or managing your downtime better, uh, detecting and resolving uh, bottlenecks quickly. Uh, here's an example of a predictive maintenance solution provided by Amazon uh, that can alert you of, uh, of potential equipment breakdown before it occurs. Uh, and it can do that, it does that uh, by uh, using machine learning models trained on vibration data that are collected from, from sensors affixed uh, to the equipment. Uh, if if the if the solution detects that there might be a failure condition, it notifies uh, uh, technicians through a mobile app, uh, and then the technicians can again can respond to that alert and also uh, they can acknowledge the alert and also provide some feedback on uh, what they found out the failure mode was, uh, whether there was any action taken on it or not taken, and all of that feedback helps the solution become uh, more intelligent. Uh, here's an application called Distance Assistance that was uh, built by Amazon Robotics and deployed across uh, multiple fulfillment centers, which basically helps uh, associates in the fulfillment center uh, detect if they are, you know, if 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 an area of the ful ful fulfillment center is getting too cramped, uh, and social distance guidelines are are uh, such that social distance is hard to maintain. It can help. Uh, managers to understand hey, how many times do people get into situations where they may not be able to maintain the distance and so that they can take proactive action and 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 and, and make changes to layout and how they are uh, uh, having people uh, 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 flow through the through the fulfillment center uh, as they perform their uh, their daily activities Here's another application uh, from our partner Cognizant, which uses, uh, which basically captures images from parts that are coming off of, coming out of a machine shop and uh, uses computer vision and machine learning to detect defects in the parts uh, and converts them into high level metrics such as scrap rate, call, uh, re, uh, uh, such as good count or bad count that can then, uh, that uh, technicians and plant managers use to track uh, efficiency and product quality at scale across in, inside their factory. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about this uh, this application uh, in, a, in a few minutes. And finally, here's a, a here's what, what the site-wise monitor application, uh, which is a, a web dashboard that's created within site-wise by end user personas such as uh, production technicians and plant, uh, plant manufacturers by simply dragging and dropping equipment properties and process metrics they wish to monitor on the canvas. They can then select from a range of visualizations as appropriate uh, for their uh, use case. Uh, they can like set alerts on, on their metrics so they don't have to like stare at the dashboard all day. Uh, and uh, we think like such dashboards and customers are telling us that such dashboards can can help factory staff quickly, you know, catch drops in production efficiency, and then also easily uh, root cause uh, uh, issues by viewing the data uh, from all the different machines uh, uh, that are, that are participating participating in the process. And then customers, because this is a web-based, customers can just simply share a link uh, 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 with their colleagues to give them access to to the same data. So today we offer uh, SiteWise, which is the focus of this webinar, uh, to help answer questions about uh, the state of the equipment or the processes and the processes that that equipment enables. Uh, SiteWise provides capabilities that are needed uh, for industrial applications, such as predictive maintenance, or remote monitoring, quality control, or condition monitoring. Uh, often data that's needed by these applications is locked up in, 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 uh, in uh, different factory databases or resides on the factory floor. It's generated by equipment. Uh, SiteWise helps collect equipment from common data sources. Uh, it can then, uh, often when the data comes out of, out of these sources, it's unstructured and uh, unlabeled. So you, uh, it's not easy to 
to understand what the data really means, what does it, uh, what does it represent. So SiteWise helps you label the data and then group it by assets. It then, uh, once you have created, uh, you know, virtual representations of your assets that we call asset models, you can further group them into production lines and then group production lines into factories, group factories into a region of factories. Uh, you can enable metrics uh, at, uh, on these groups. The metrics use the data that's being collected to uh, give you insights into how, uh, you know, that particular uh, uh, group or, or assets within a group are performing and then metrics can also roll up. So you could, uh, for example, the compute metric at, at the production line level, but then have a roll up at the factory level and, and, and then have a roll up all the way at the region level. And then you could compare different regions to see which ones are more efficient and then, you know, um, uh, dive deep to answer any questions uh, you might have. Uh, uh, and then it provides an out of the box uh, monitoring application called SiteWise Monitor, which, which, which I just showed you, uh, which can help uh, customers uh, easily visualize the data they're collecting and labeling and structuring by using uh, using a drag and drop uh, pattern. Uh, and then finally, uh, ISVs uh, or, or industrial developers can use uh, uh, APIs that SiteWise provides to get model data out for their own custom applications, such as predictive maintenance, quality monitoring, uh, uh, condition monitoring, and, and all that. Uh, so uh, we, we launched SiteWise, uh, we GA'd SiteWise last year, and then we quickly learned that we also have to uh, uh, enable some of these features at the edge for uh, a whole bunch of uh, different reasons uh, that we learned from customers. So uh, we, we, what, we, what we learned was that a lot of these applications of, of quality monitoring or, or predictive maintenance or uh, process mo efficiency monitoring, they're required by uh, folks that are working on the factory floor. And what that means is uh, 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 those applications need to be uh, available around the clock. They need to have a high uptime. So whether, uh, whether the connection to the cloud is available or not, those applications still need to continue working. Uh, we've learned that uh, while many customers have uh, 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 <clears throat> robust in internet connections, it's not uncommon for uh, connectivity to go down and be intermittent. Uh, and especially uh, it's increasingly common how uh, the, the more remote your, your facilities are. Uh, then we learned from uh, uh, some customers that the bandwidth out of their facilities is limited and is shared by multiple applications. So all these new applications that they want to develop for plant managers and technicians uh, need to make sure that uh, they're using uh, the bandwidth economically and sharing it well uh, between other applications. Uh, then there are a few applications where customers just want to reduce the latency as much as possible. So they, uh, <clears throat> and then finally, they are in certain industries such as pharma, uh, even in oil and gas in certain regions of the world, uh, customers have to ensure that data that's generated on the facility stays on, on the facility. So uh, any applications that are built need to be close to the source of the data. So the data doesn't need to leave the facility uh, for, for uh, to be used in those applications. So we launched SiteWise Edge where to bring uh, the, the, the data structuring, labeling and monitoring capabilities that are available uh, in the SiteWise cloud service to the edge. Uh, so now uh, not only can you, uh, using your SiteWise gateway, you can collect the data, you can also process it using asset models, and then uh, you can create uh, the monitor dashboards that you have created in the cloud, you can deploy them to the edge, and those dashboards can reprocess data, uh, the data that's being processed locally, and uh, the, our, the gateway can serve that, 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 that uh, that dashboard over your local network, so your plant managers can directly get their dashboards uh, <clears throat> from um, uh, in in uh, open the dashboards in the local browser if if uh, while connected to the network. And as a result of this, if even if the operation is disconnected, uh, you know you don't your your applications are not uh, now because we have processing uh, uh, happening on premises. Uh, we also enable a whole bunch of other use cases, such as remote monitoring, where uh, you know you may not have 
bandwidth to send all the data to your remote monitoring application. But with local processing, you could you could uh, 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 aggregate that data before and just send the final result. Uh, because now data is being processed locally, uh, we eliminate the cloud round trip, so that shaves off a few hundred milliseconds from your latency if that matters to you. And then you can keep, if you have data residency requirements, you can keep the data, you can keep the data local. Uh, we're gonna get into how sidewise uh, help uh, sidewise edge processing also makes sure that the data uh, that you don't want to leave the facility can be get processed and stored locally uh, to to comply with your with your requirements there. Uh, sidewise edge uh, uh, ships feature capabilities in terms in in packs. So we have a, a data collection pack, which has support for reading data from common industrial protocols. Today, we support reading data from OPC UA, Ethernet IP, and Modbus. Uh, uh, the data that's collected is stored locally uh, in buffers and then forwarded to the cloud. Uh, we, the local buffers help with, uh, con uh, with in situations where the cloud connection uh, is not available. So uh, uh, data that's being collected would just be stored in the buffers, and then when the when the cloud connection becomes available, it's going to be pushed to uh, to the cloud service that you have configured the data to be pushed to. Uh, and then if you're pushing data to Sitewise, uh, the Sitewise cloud service has features that can help you handle late data. Uh, so for example, if your data is coming in, let's say you had an outage and the data, you couldn't uh, send any data for an entire day and a half. Uh, so when eventually the connection is restored and the data is pushed, uh, Sitewise Edge, uh, Sitewise Cloud Service is gonna take that late data into account and go and compute all the metrics that uh, it wasn't able to continue in the past uh, when the data wasn't available. Uh, and store those store those calculations in in the database. So if you went back uh, uh, to see historic uh, historic data, you should be able to see those uh, uh, retroactively computed uh, computed metrics. Uh, then another thing I want to highlight is uh, we have made it easier to send data to non site wise data sources. So when you set up your gateway, uh, you can configure uh, uh, configure it to write to a greengrass stream which you can then uh, do the Greengrass Stream Manager, which, which can then export the data to a variety of AWS destinations of your choices and even, even local destinations or custom destinations uh, that you may need to send data to for your solutions. Uh, the data processing pack uh, brings uh, your asset models to the edge. Uh, and uses those asset models to compute to, to to label the data that that's being read, uh, to compute transforms and to compute metrics, uh, and to uh, uh, and and then uh, it 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 makes that data accessible over the same APIs uh, that uh, you uh, use in the cloud to get data from Sitewise. So all the 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 get get property value, get asset, list assets, all the data plane APIs. Uh, you can call uh, uh, directly from the gateway and uh, to get this data out. Uh, additionally, Sitewise uh, now automatically syncs your asset models uh, between uh, to uh, between the cloud and, and the edge. So uh, uh, let's say that you added a new metric in the cloud uh, in, inside your asset model. Uh, Sitewise is going to automatically is going to detect that change and then update the models. Uh, uh, the relevant models at the edge to make sure that your uh, your applications at the edge are are using using updated uh, the the most uh, recent logic that you want them to. Uh, well, another point here I mentioned earlier that how Sitewise Edge stores the data it processes. Uh, Sitewise Edge has its uh, a built-in time series database, just like uh, Sitewise has a time series database in the cloud. So all of your uh, pre-processed and post-processed data is stored in that time series database uh, to give you the same query performance that you would expect from 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 a time series database in the cloud. Uh, of course, that's that uh, you have to size your workloads well to make sure that because you are now like running on a gateway which which is compute constrained. But from a software perspective, uh, you know you should you should you should uh, get the performance of of a time series database. Uh, 
and we uh, side by side, uh, we have the the software also retains the data at the at the edge. So one of the use cases, uh, oftentimes customers tell us that even when they're doing a local monitoring, they may not need like data for you know for 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 the quarter or for months, but they may need data for up to for uh, for for uh, for a few weeks uh, in their local application. So maybe they're like comparing when they're root causing, let's say a, a process efficiency issue, they can they can see. It, uh, uh, they, they want to access data from past shifts and from past weeks to be able to point out exactly where things might have uh, uh, go, gone wrong. So uh, customers can retain that data uh, on, on, on their database. Oftentimes, uh, an emerging uh, use, uh, our customers come to us and they talk about, they, they want to enable uh, use cases that require not just uh, uh, data from machines, but also data from other systems such as ERP systems and and increasingly commonly data from cameras. Uh, so computer based computer vision based quality uh, is, 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 is a trending use case and you, you, you're probably seeing a lot of uh, solutions coming out to, to, to tackle that. Uh, so I just wanted to show you how uh, you can use uh, you can enable computer vision based quality at the edge. Uh, uh, yourself by building a, a solution uh, that uses Sitewise Edge and uh, the Panorama service uh, that, that we also launched at last reInvent. So Panorama is, a, is, a, is an edge computer vision uh, device and an SDK uh, that allows you to uh, in, get data from IP cameras on your network and then uh, run computer vision models to infer uh, 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 quality issues or or, 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 or or any other condition that you might want and might have trained a model for from, from the images that it's collecting from the cameras. And now, so with Panorama, you can, after you've done the inference, you can publish your inference uh, uh, results to Sitewise Edge uh, using MQTT and uh, Sitewise Edge can then use those inference results to compute uh, metrics and and uh, you can view those metrics locally in in a in a dashboard or in 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 an app in any other app, custom application that you might have built or a partner application you might be using such as such as Grafana. So in this example, you know the inference would be uh, you know a quality a quality count whether you, you it could be whether the whether <clears throat> a certain count is good or uh, or, or or bad. And then uh, that count would just be forwarded to Sitewise Edge, and uh, quality count is something that's used in in computation of OE. So Sitewise is going to use that result for 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 an OE metric. And then uh, uh, data that uh, you have computed at the edge can be seamlessly forwarded to the cloud. So you could compute your OE at the edge for your uh, for for your plant managers and technicians using local applications, and but you can save that comp that you can save the result in the cloud as well for uh, to to keep a <clears throat> larger uh, oh, like a, a more detailed historic record or for uh, <clears throat> in the in the cloud. So uh, accessing uh, data from Sitewise Edge uh, is easy. Uh, so you. You use, we, we ensured that you can use the same programming model and patterns that you use in the cloud to get data out of Sitewise at the edge. So uh, you, you basically just have to configure your SDK with the access key and secret key that will be provided during when you are setting up your edge gateway. Uh, you then register your edge gateway certificate with your SDK, uh, and then you just start calling uh, the same APIs that are, that are available in the cloud. Uh, uh, here's a, also a layer cake just to give you uh, an idea of how the software works under the hood. So the Sitewise Edge software is shipped as uh, Greengrass components uh, that are deployed on, on, on a Greengrass device, uh, which, is, which, is, which, which is your Sitewise gateway. Uh, and uh, it then exposes a data plane locally that you can then call from uh, other components that might be running on Greengrass or other applications that might be running in containers, uh, you can also call uh, you can also call them over the network. So you may have an application that's running on a different uh, on a on a on a different Greengrass device or on a different or or a different computer or a server 
could they could call the APIs and get the data from 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 the gateway. Cool. I will now uh, just quickly shift to uh, uh, the console to give you an idea of how you can set up uh, edge processing for using Sitewise Edge. Here we are in the Sitewise uh, console where I have set up a Sitewise Edge gateway uh, that is reading data from an OPC UA data source as we have specified here and it's uh, it's processing data using asset models as we have uh, specified here by enabling the data processing back. Now in order to configure uh, specific models to run at the edge uh, I can navigate to I I can navigate to my models uh, menu and where I can go and now uh, I have an option to configure these models for edge. So before we go explore that, uh, that what that option does, let's like, take a look at uh, what's inside the model. Uh, this, is a, this is a demo uh, generator model which has uh, three measurements, RPM, temperature, and watts, and it has two metrics, uh, which is sum of watts, which is calculated over five minutes, and uh, there's like a ratio of average RPM uh, with power consumed, uh, <clears throat> which is also calculated over, over five minutes. So now I may want to, for depending on my use case, I may want to uh, compute certain metrics at the edge for use in local applications or uh, for to prevent to to conserve my bandwidth, I may want to uh, read in a few measurements for my local applications, but not send them to the cloud. Uh, keep them entirely at the edge, or there might be some uh, uh, metrics that I want to uh, uh, ensure that they are computed in the cloud uh, because I just don't. Uh, they they consume uh, an amount of data that I don't want my edge gateway to process. For example or are not needed for my local application. So uh, in order to, 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 to specify these preferences or where certain things should be computed, what should go to the edge, what should stay in the cloud, you simply navigate to the configure for edge menu and you see a whole bunch of options here. The default option is that there's no edge configuration on your models. So all the data, all the raw data or the measurements that are read by the gateway for this model are forwarded to the cloud all the metrics and the transforms are computed in the cloud. Uh, then you have an option to, uh, as a convenience, decide to compute all properties at the edge uh, because you might have, your primary use case might be an edge use case. Uh, you don't want to send a data to the cloud. Uh, you want to make sure that your those applications are 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 uninterrupted. So all the model all the model data uh, is supposed to be processed at the edge. You can go pick pick that, and uh, that would uh, basically uh, tell Sitewise to make sure that all the data for this particular model is processed on the gateway. Then you can uh, uh, pick uh, make custom selections. So like I have done here, where I want the somewhat metric. Uh, some watts metric uh, to be computed at the edge, but the, the ratio to be computed in the cloud. Uh, additionally, uh, I, uh, for my application, for my local applications, I, I need to uh, visualize temperature, but uh, I don't have a use case where I need uh, this, this, this particular, uh, uh, the, the temperature readings in the cloud. So I, I'm just gonna decide to keep that measurement at the edge and that would help me uh, perhaps like conserve, conserve my bandwidth. So once uh, you have configured this site-wise, uh, would automatically replicate this particular model to your gateways. Uh, you might have noticed that there wasn't a step where we told site-wise which gateway to run a particular model on, and that's very much intentional. Uh, what we realized was that it's often if uh, very complex for customers to know that which gateway is processing data for which particular production line. So as a convenience, we just uh, replicate all the models to all the gateways you have in the account. However, only the models that you have configured data for or, or the gateways collecting data for will, will actually be used for data processing. So now that I've configured these uh, this model for the edge, let's let's see it in action. 
uh, I've created a uh, two uh, a, a, a dashboard using the Sitewise monitor feature that allows me to create uh, a web-based dashboards that I can simply share by sharing their URLs. Uh, with Sitewise Edge, I can run these dashboards in the cloud. So we let's go and uh, check one of these portals I've created. So this portal right now that I'm seeing is is in the cloud. Like I I linked it. I I got here from the cloud console, and I see my demo dashboard. It's right here. If I open it now, you can see that in the cloud console, I can see the watts. Uh, uh, the, the 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 watts metric. This we had configured for Edge. So in Sitewise Edge today, you can uh, comp all the metrics that are computed at the Edge are available at the Edge, but they're also forwarded to the cloud because in many cases, if you computed a metric for a process, you want to store it for long-term analysis as well. So right now, all the metrics, uh, even those that are computed at the edge, are forwarded to the cloud. So that's why you see this. Uh, you see a graph of of this metric uh, uh, with, with with values on it. If you, if you scroll further down, however, you would realize that you can see the graph for RPM, which is a measurement that. Uh, is getting forward to the edge, but you don't see any uh, graph for temperature because this is the this is the measurement that we decided to keep at edge. So it's in so it's not showing up in the cloud. Uh, but all the two other uh, the both the the metric that was computed uh, is being computed at the edge, and the metric that's being computed in the cloud both are present in the edge uh, on on the cloud dashboard, visible on the cloud dashboard. Now, uh, let me switch to my edge dashboard. So here, uh, you might notice that my URL has changed. This is because I'm now hitting a, a local gateway, uh, a, a site-wise gateway that I have set up on my own network, and uh, this particular portal is being served. Uh, from a web server that is in uh, that is on that Sitewise gateway that is provided uh, as part of the Sitewise Edge data processing pack, and here I can see that I can see the metric that I'm computing locally, uh, the the watts metric, and I can see both the temperature and RPM. And this is uh, because these are the raw measurements that the gateway is collecting. I can see them both. I can see the sum watts. Uh, a five minute metric. However, I cannot see this ratio average RPM power metric because that is something, uh, because that's a metric that's being computed in the cloud. So this is some very, this is how you can see uh, just how uh, uh, from, from an end application perspective, uh, what will be available in the cloud at the edge based, simply based on, on, on the settings that you did on the model. And, and that's the extent of it. You don't have to write any code. You don't have to, uh, uh, maintain any any other configuration. It's just point and click, uh, pick your metrics, uh, select where you want to run your metrics and transforms, or whether you want to store your measurements at the edge, forward them, and Sitewise Edge handles uh, handles the rest. Uh, we are very excited to be working with uh, Coca Cola iCheck. Uh, uh, who's one of the key bottlers of Coca-Cola in the Coca-Cola system. Uh, Co the Coca-Cola iCheck or CCI as uh, for short has uh, 26 plants across uh, Turkey, Pakistan, Central Asia and Middle East serving over 400 million customers. Uh, and uh, CCI is using uh, site-wise both the cloud service and Edge to uh, right now monitor and uh, their uh, clean in place uh, process. So in, 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 in any bottling operation, oftentimes the same equipment that is, uh, that is being used to produce uh, uh, one kind of beverage is, is, used, is being used to produce another kind of beverage. So in case of CCI, uh, you know, in one shift, you could be producing uh, Coca-Cola and in another shift, you could be producing Sprite. So the, the, the task between uh, one batch and another is to make sure that the equipment is clean so that the flavors don't mix up and uh, uh, the batch is of high quality every time. And the process that's followed to ensure that is called the clean in place process where uh, the, the entire equipment and, 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 and is, is, is washed through with different kinds of solutions, with water, with, with, with with, with caustic solutions and, uh, and then it is uh, uh, and then it is dried 
and the whole process can can get comprised of six to seven steps and it has to take place uh, it can take place multiple times in a particular day uh, so with using a solution a digital twin solution built on sitewise uh, cci can monitor can track the entire clean and play clean, uh, clean and place process on premises and also remotely from the cloud and uh, uh, this enables them to uh, make sure that the process runs smoothly every time. If they're if they're bottlenecks, if they're holdups, they can uh, they can jump on fixing them right away. And this has resulted in some uh, substantial in, in in substantial benefits for them. They uh, we estimate uh, they estimate uh, saving about twenty percent on energy annually. Uh, they have saved nine percent on water uh, already. And uh, now they're just continuing to look how they can further optimize uh, uh, optimize the process and also improve the solution, and enable new use cases on top of SiteWise to 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 get even more savings um, and efficiencies. We are also excited to work with uh, ISV partners and global system integrators. Uh, we're especially excited about the progress we have made with Cognizant on their Apex uh, 2.0 solution uh, that is designed for end user personas uh, such as plant managers, quality managers, and production technicians uh, on the factory floor uh, who want easy access to data to answer a lot of the questions we brought up we brought up earlier. So I'm actually I'm gonna uh, switch over to do a quick demo of of the application that they have built uh, uh, and and uh, for entirely uh, for the edge. We are uh, looking at the Cognizant Apex 2.0 application uh, that's running on 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 the Sitewise Edge Gateway. It's an exciting application designed for end user personas such as plant managers and production technicians uh, on the factory floor who can use it to get uh, insights into key aspects of uh, an entire manufacturing operation. This is very much in spirit of uh, helping people on the factory floor participating in the process to, to improve uh, operations on the ground. Uh, this particular uh, uh, demo is configured for a vertically integrated uh, plant that builds uh, washing machines from uh, parts fabricated in-house. Uh, the plant has dedicated areas for each stage of the process. Uh, the fabrication area has uh, machines or work centers where parts are made. For example, there's an inj injection molding machine to make parts uh, such as knobs that go on the settings panel of the washing machine. There's a sub-assembly area where the, plant, where the parts are assembled into subsystems such as pumps, transmissions, and chassis of the washing machine. Uh, once uh, completed, these sub-assemblies are moved into the assembly area where they're fitted together and wired up uh, to, into a finished product that can be packaged off and sold to customers. Now, uh, let's say you are a production supervisor for the sub-assemblies um, area, and you are, uh, uh, and you know from from working in this role that oftentimes, uh, you know, quality issues that are reported by customers are are often tracked to welding uh, uh, issues with with welding of metal parts and joints. So you may want to inspect the quality of parts coming out of the welding work center every now and then. Uh, you can using this application you can simply navigate to it to get a big picture view so here you can see uh, the total parts that have been the total number of parts that have been created uh, on this work center during the current shift you can see the number of good parts you can see the number of parts that had something wrong with them a quality issue that uh, that uh, caused them to be scrapped uh, you can then see, uh, you can also see how fast parts are performing. Uh, you can see the average cycle time, which is basically the, the amount of time spent uh, welding uh, each part uh, which, uh, is, is uh, 58 uh, uh, seconds. Maybe that's good or bad. Uh, you see that there's no downtime that has occurred. Uh, that's a good thing. And you can see the total production time, uh, total time that this production process has been running for. You can then uh, scroll down and and see uh, uh, the rate of uh, pretty much the rate of production. You can see how the uh, total part count has been growing at a steady rate, which is which is good. There are no blips, 
which would then indicate that there was something that uh, there was a bottleneck somewhere that caused uh, the uh, the the operation to slow down. Uh, then uh, putting uh, this, uh, we there are standard metrics such as OE overall equipment efficiency that can uh, help you uh, that basically combine availability throughput and and quality metrics to give you an overall uh, uh, assessment of of your of your operation. And here we have. Uh, you can see the graph of OEE over time. Uh, oftentimes, uh, to debug issues with OEE, it's helpful to know what the OEE, uh, how the OEE has varied over uh, different shifts. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, if it was higher in the previous shift, lower in the current shift, or lower in the previous shift, higher in the current one, you can then engage the right folks to get guidance and uh, get ideas on what might have happened. Uh, then now, uh, uh, give, now that you have the big picture view, you may want to uh, get into the details. You may want to understand why these seven parts were uh, scrapped. What was wrong with them? So you can go in the in this inspect details section, uh, which uh, basically would display uh, all of your scrap events on a timeline. So we saw we see one right here. Uh, you can simply hover over it and you see an image. Uh, which of the part which is annotated, uh, uh, the, the, the parts that are annotated are those of interest. Uh, and this particular image is uh, 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 has uh, three bars on it that have been detected by this application and then there are two pins. And the application knows that there, there's something wrong with that because uh, 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 on this particular part, we expect to see four bars and four pins. So you you get an idea of what uh, on what where the issues are might uh, are occurring. So armed with this insight, uh, you can then engage uh, folks at the work center. You can go physically uh, in, uh, inspect the work center. You can go ph physically inspect the parts and drive your team to. Uh, 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 to to take action and figure out figure out next steps. So uh, this application, as you could see in just a few seconds, it allowed us to uh, basically dive into a very specific uh, operation uh, happening in the facility. Get it get get an overall uh, uh, view of what's going on uh, at that uh, for that particular operation, and then uh, root cause uh, specific issues that we that we saw. And uh, this is really the power of the next generation of industrial applications where uh, you have these intuitive user interfaces hosted in a web application that can be accessed from anywhere, from, uh, from, from any web browser, and they're powered by uh, data analytics, uh, computer vision, machine learning to really shorten your time uh, to operational insights and also like make it very easy to get operational insights uh, when you want them. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, just in this particular context, it's all running at the edge. So uh, if if your internet connection went down, that doesn't cut you off from all uh, from all of these really powerful capabilities. They are they remain available, uh, and uh, your operations continue uh, uh, continue uh, running. The APEX solution uses SiteWise Edge as a data collection and processing foundation. It uses the data collection pack to get uh, data from OPC UA server and then uses the data processing pack to structure the data for each work center and compute associated metrics. Because SiteWise Edge is built on Greengrass, APEX is able to extend uh, SiteWise Edge for its use case through custom Lambda functions or containerized logic. Mm -hmm. These functions can read and write data back into SiteWise Edge through uh, the Greengrass Stream Manager. For example, here an image analytics function performs image annotation classification to determine if a, if a part meets the quality criteria. It then writes this inference result into the data processing pack via Stream Manager for use in metrics such as yield, scrap ratio, and OEE. Similarly, an aggregation function reads shift data from an ERP PostgreSQL database and combines it with the OEE metric and then writes it back to SiteWise Edge to provide shift-wise metrics that can then be read into uh, the Apex uh, application that we just demoed. 
the entire solution is deployed as containers or green grass components on an edge computer. Uh, a significant advantage of this is that IT admins can configure and upgrade the, uh, the, the solution and individual parts of the solution remotely. Using Sitewise Edge also makes it easy for them to reuse the same application code across Edge in the cloud. As a result, Cognizant does not need to maintain a separate Edge fork and a separate cloud fork for the Apex solution, which drives down the cost of developing and operating the solution over time. So with that, we come to the end of our webinar. I uh, hope you found, find, found this helpful in understanding what uh, capability Sitewise Edge brings to the table and how Sitewise Edge fits within the broader e ecosystem of AWS's industrial capabilities. Uh, if you uh, you can Sitewise Edge is available in preview today. So if you want to get started, you can head over to uh, uh, the Sitewise website, uh, log into the console, and uh, create create an Edge gateway. Uh, thank you for joining. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post in our forums or uh, comment on the blogs.